So today we're talking about how to build and use a taxonomy. Uh, we'll kind of go over the goals for the workshop, dive in a little bit into what is a taxonomy, <laughs> what does it mean uh, in general, and what does it mean for your organization. Uh, and then we'll really get into how taxonomies work in action and how you can better identify, document, uh, understand, evolve, and leverage uh, your organization's taxonomy. Uh, a quick note about where this fits into uh, Parsons CKO's work and philosophy. Uh, you know, if you've if you've been to any of these before, if this is your first time, you uh, you know you know that our our whole spin on this is engagement architecture, uh, the idea that all of the people, processes, and platforms uh, that make up your organization and that you leverage need to be thought of holistically and strategically to give your audiences the kind of engaging experiences that they need in order to help you advance your mission. Um, taxonomy, we all often like to say, is sort of the glue that binds everything together in your engagement architecture. Um, so we'll see that in action uh, throughout the workshop. So our goal is, again, what we hope to achieve today, uh, provide some clarity on what taxonomy is and, more importantly, what it does. Um, understand how taxonomies are used today within and across your external channels and internally. Uh, sneak preview, uh, we're going to be talking about websites, but going far beyond websites uh, in terms of where your taxonomies live and how they're leveraged. We'll start to talk about how you can determine what opportunities exist for evolving your usage of the taxonomy. Um, so, you know, uh, sort of ground zero for taxonomies is normally when you do the website redesign and you say, okay, well, what are the topics how are we gonna organize the topics on our site? Um, so maybe your organization already has some topics in place on the website. Um, we'll sort of extend from that out to how you can use taxonomies such as topics um, more across the board. The, uh, the, the other thing that we're gonna do is prepare, to, uh, prepare you to talk with your peers about taxonomy and how you can collectively use taxonomy to improve uh, your engagement efforts across platform. Um, and we're gonna be working with a spreadsheet template uh, that we put together and that will, um, the link was in your email. We'll also share it in the chat uh, in a little bit so that you can start to document for yourself uh, what taxonomies you have in place uh, and how you can sort of collaborate with your peers, particularly across uh, organizational silos to really leverage your taxonomy. All right, taxonomy, what's in a name? All right, so my definition of taxonomy or our, our definition of taxonomy is that it's a classification system for your content, your projects, your audiences, and your data that empower strategic use within and across the channels and systems of your organization's engagement architecture. Um, you know, so taxonomies are, are, are famous in science, especially in the animal kingdom for saying this animal is like this and this animal is like this, everything neatly grouped and organized, um, but evolve over time. Um, so we think of taxonomy as something that is not just how you categorize the content on your website, but it's at all levels in your organization. So you have taxonomies that are about your audiences, about attributes of your audiences and your contact model. Um, you have taxonomies of your data. What types of data do you have? What do you use it for? How does that connect to your content? Um, you have taxonomies uh, most likely for your internal projects or the way that you organize your work. And the, the critical thing about taxonomies is that they're there to be used. Um, they're there to empower strategic use. So it's good to take a step back and say, what are we using these taxonomies for? You know, what audiences do they serve, internal or external? Um, and we'll, we'll get into that more in a little bit. This last or second to last point is important within and across the channels and systems. Um, so uh, again, sort of taxonomy uh, level zero is, uh, or level one, having some good topics on your website um, and maybe having um, some topical lists in your email system um, where you start to see taxonomy really connect is, can you send dynamic emails um, to your audiences with the topical content from your site to the topics that people on your email list care about. Um, so taxonomy really uh, is a tool for starting to understand your audiences more and connect them across systems. Okay, enough, uh, enough definition there. Uh, 
This is just to kind of expand our understanding of what taxonomies exist and to really start to think about the channels that they can be used in, the things that they can apply to, and what are those strategic uh, uses that we talked about. So again, here, the, the, I'm not going to go into these uh, exhaustively, um, but most organizations have some sort of topical organization, uh, particularly uh, um, any organizations that cover a, a wide range of work um, or a wide uh, you know, range of efforts. Um, so topics, the topics that you use to organize your work, and that can be relevant as we've seen on your website, uh, on your email system, in your CRM, if you associate topics with particular contacts, uh, be they ex uh, external or internal, uh, and topics can apply to specific things. So reports you produce, posts on your site, um, experts that you have, these are some of the common ones, blog posts. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm um, again thinking as taxonomy is terms that apply to things. Um, so if you can apply a, a topic uh, like climate change to website content and to a contact and to your email system, and they all say climate change associated with those objects, then you can more effectively connect those pieces. So uh, and it, the, the last piece is really to think about the strategic use of a given taxonomy. Um, so you can use it to enforce content strategy. You can support related content consumption and inform calls to action. So you can see two of these uh, are uh, sort of external facing strategic uses, right? So if someone is coming to your page and they care about climate change, having the site uh, be able to automatically present other content about climate change um, really helps to support that content consumption. Um, and then internally enforcing content strategy, you could say, hey, climate change is an important topic. If we look at the data, we see that our climate change um, reports generate a lot of uh, traffic and downloads and interest. Are we publishing enough on this given topic? Um, should we adjust our editorial calendar to publish more on this content? So that's just one example of a, a kind of a common type of, of taxonomy. Um, staff is another one. Um, thinking through, uh, you know, the the people in your organization um, and what types of people those are. Um, often those will be represented in your website. You know, if you have experts on a, a variety of of, uh, of topics um, that you want to sort of show showcase to the world, um, they could also be relevant in your CRM. And again, when you think about um, uh, going back to the idea of a contact model, if you have your staff and your contacts in your same CRM and you're using something like topics, you can more effectively say, okay, well, we have this expert who cares about climate change and we have these audiences who care about climate change. Uh, and given the audience type, maybe there are opportunities to make more direct connections uh, between staff uh, and audiences. So I won't go into the rest of these, um, but just know that when we say taxonomy, we're talking about those big categories of things that can be relevant across different channels, apply to uh, various assets and be used strategically. So this is just a little concrete example uh, using our own website as the, uh, as the, the guinea pig, uh, so to speak. Um, so really thinking about your engagement platforms, you can you know, a, a great place to start when thinking of your taxonomy is with your specific pages of content. So not necessarily your broad mission statement pages or your about us pages, but the individual pieces of content uh, that you produce, because those will often reveal a lot of the taxonomies that you have in play. Um, sometimes ones that you have planned for specifically, uh, sometimes new ones uh, that, that you didn't really think were taxonomies are implied. Uh, and sometimes ones that, you know, you can find taxonomies that are there and in your system somewhat, but are perhaps uh, under leveraged uh, in your uh, engagement architecture. So the example that we have here is one of our blog posts. Um, I think we'll we'll put the link to this uh, in chat or in the email um, uh, follow up to this about uh, turning data into actionable insights. So if we look at this page, um, this is something you can start to infer even if you don't have uh, you know, backend access to a system, right? So there are some of these, you know, elements of this taxonomy are in play uh, in our CMS, um, but you don't have to have access to the, to the backend to, to take a look and, and see what you think might be there. So if we look at a blog post, we see a couple different types of taxonomies. So 
we know that uh, you know channel should be a taxonomy. What channels do we have? So this is our website. Um, content type is also a common uh, taxonomy. What are the different types of content we produce? So this is a blog post. Um, you know, one thing to mention about content type is that it doesn't necessarily uh, isn't limited to just content on your website. I know a lot of times in, in CMS world, content type means a very specific thing um, for how content is packaged. Um, but when we think of uh, taxonomies uh, for content type, we often think of a, sort of a level above that. What are the various combinations and presentations of your information uh, to your audiences online and offline? Uh, so taxonomy, uh, um, so another taxonomy that we have here is topics. So what, what topics does this cover? And the taxonomy term would be data. Uh, you know, a, a common way of identifying taxonomies is saying this blank is about blank. This blog post is about data. Um, so it's associated with data. Um, we also have the author is um, my colleague Rick Richards. Um, and that is also another uh, uh, taxonomy that we have so the different authors um, or experts in our organization. So again, some of these taxonomies, um, uh, you know, are probably if you look at your own website, um, some of these are ones that uh, are, are likely ones that you know and have planned for uh, and might have some degree of control over. Um, others are there because that's how they've always been done. You know, we see that a lot of times with um, organizations that are have been running a blog for a long time or using blog like tagging functionality where they have 600 topical tags um, that WordPress has allowed them to use and um, their own kind of lack of internal governance um, has led to the proliferation of those tags. Um, so this will also be a, a way for you to identify, oh wait, who determines that this is about data or this is about X or this is about Y? Uh, and we'll get into that a little bit more uh, in the spreadsheet. So getting a little bit more in depth into why are taxonomies useful? Uh, it's again, important to really think through, uh, to, to think of this internally and externally. Um, so topics are, or taxonomies are useful for your audiences so they can you know, find the types of content that they want, discover more content, um, filter and search content. You know, and if you're presenting taxonomies like a topics or regions, um, you know, things like that, that's a signal to your audience of you know, what you care about uh, and how you organize uh, your work and your content. Um, and it also has implications for how your content appears uh, in Google search uh, results. We're not gonna get a lot into the search aspect of this, but, but know that taxonomy is, is very important for your uh, search engine optimization efforts as well. So on the, uh, on the internal front, um, taxonomies are really useful for reporting. So if you have good taxonomies in place, you can say, hey, what are the most popular blog posts? You know, what, what, are the, what are the topics of the most engaging blog posts that we've had? Um, or who are the authors of the most downloaded reports? Um, being able to uh, answer those types of questions relies on having a good, strong and consistent taxonomy in place. So you can really see uh, you know, where your content and your engagement points are performing or underperforming. Um, and that helps you inform decisions about what content to create, to focus on, to sunset, Again, if you're if you're able to say every month, let's look, let's take a look at the top topics uh, in in our um, you know multi-expert blog that we spend a lot of time on, then you can start to plan for you know increasing the visibility of some topics that aren't performing as well, or doubling down on topics that are still relevant. Um, this also helps you really understand your. Uh, your audiences and inform more quote personalized content. So the idea is that particularly if you have taxonomies in play uh, in your uh, contact model, uh, in your CRM, um, then you're able to say, oh, here's a list of people who really care about climate change and frequently come to our events. Let's give them a certain experience, a certain type of content that is relevant to them. It's personal, somewhat personalized for them um, uh, based on what they care about. Um, the, the third sort of category here is your internal operations. So taxonomies can be very useful. I'd almost say critical for you know, building a common language for describing how you do your work um, and how it is connected. 
we've had uh, we 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 we've run into many situations uh, with uh, with clients who um, uh, will you know will kind of convene people from different departments and we'll start to dig into their taxonomy and we'll realize that two different teams are using slightly similar taxonomies to talk about slightly similar things, um, but uh, they're not sharing that vocabulary. Um, it's, it's sort of misaligned. Um, uh, and, and there are aspects of the taxonomy that uh, people don't even know about that come up. Um, you know, so uh, the perennial uh, example is, you know, some organizations say we, we talk about issues, other organizations say we talk about topics. Um, in many ways, it doesn't care if you call it topics or issues, but as long as you use the same, uh, the same word, uh, the same um, term and concept for, for categorizing your work. So those are some ways that taxonomy um, can be really useful. Uh, Again, as I mentioned, that uh, taxonomy isn't just for the website, and we'll take a look at a website today uh, to start to uncover uh, taxonomies that are in play. But where taxonomy really becomes a superpower is in thinking about it uh, across your different channels. So we can take a look here, um, building on the example um, uh, example here from the blog post is that the taxonomy in play is topic. So that's the broad category. The term within the taxonomy is data. So we can see now how that can be used in two different channels. So in the website, um, that can be used to apply to um, blog posts, to case studies, to, to people, um, and in uh, the email channel sign up forms, campaigns, contacts, links, dynamic content automations, all of those things can be associated with the term data. So for example, if someone goes to a blog post on data uh, on the website and fills up and fills out an email sign up form, the system can tell us, hey, this person signed up for content about data. Uh, and that helps us craft more uh, um, specific campaigns. So we say, who cares about data? <laughs> I mean, everyone should, but who on our list has signaled that they care about data? Um, the only way we can know that uh, at scale um, is to uh, put taxonomies into place. Uh, and that lets us do things like analyze our content, develop our content strategy, again, personalize content, uh, et cetera. All right, depending where your organization is with your taxonomy, these are some of the ways that your taxonomy can evolve over time and, and strengthen over time. Uh, so one of the ways is to, to really deepen your use of the taxonomy within a channel. Uh, so that is often what happens when you go through a website redesign or a refresh and you think, okay, I really wanna, we wanna make our content easier to find, let's revisit our topics. We have too many topics, let's simplify. Um, you know, or we have a whole new sphere of areas that we've started working on. How do we make those fit within our current uh, taxonomy or, or structure? And, you know, what kind of dynamic content presentation uh, can we develop based on those taxonomies? So that's really sort of doing a, a deep dive into how you use taxonomies within channels. Uh, other example of that would be really going into your email system or your CRM and saying, okay, we really want to create a, a list of people who care about a particular topic so that we can make sure to reach out more effectively to them when we have new content or opportunities around that topic. So that's one uh, deepening use of your taxonomies within your channels. Uh, a second way that your taxonomy can evolve is you know, gathering new data with your taxonomies to inform your strategy and assess tactics. So that's where you know you want to be able to say things like, you know, what topics do people really care about on our list? Um, what content um, uh, on the website uh, is most engaging for particular audiences? Uh, so that you can make decisions about what type of content you need to put out. Um, you know, your your visual presentation of things like email signups. Uh, you know, are people coming to a page but not signing up for the next step? Um, be that you know email sign up, a donation, an advocacy action, et cetera, um, because maybe the, the the presentation isn't as strong as it could be. So gathering data is another key ways uh, way that you can use and evolve your taxonomy. 
the third one is the the big <laughs> big uh, super mega evolved form of taxonomy, which is really to standardize and connect it um, across your channels to understand and improve your engagement again across channels. Um, and you know, oftentimes uh, organizations will jump right to, oh, we have a new email system, we need to recreate our list. All good and well, um, but that's also an opportunity to say, what is our taxonomy? How do we organize our world? Um, how do we organize our contact and our, our content and our contacts and our people um, so that we are connecting uh, our audiences with the information that they need and we want them to have? So standardizing and connecting your taxonomies is a way to do that. And the idea for the taxonomy comes before, as with, with almost all things, the, the definition and strategy comes before the technical implication. Um, so another note about taxonomies is they're called different things in different systems. They're implemented different ways in different systems. Um, you know, often in a particular, in any given sort of complex engagement system or platform, uh, you can implement taxonomies in different ways. So if you're you know, spinning up uh, a new instance of an email system, you probably have a way to um, uh, to use custom fields, standard fields as way of ways of categorizing information, as well as tags or topics or labels um, that are that tend to be a little bit more fluid um, uh, and 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 flexible. So again, the specifics of implementing the taxonomy can can vary wildly uh, from platform to platform. So it's important to get to that same page of you know just what the terms are, um, and then determine uh, you know, how to implement them. Okay, so those are some ways that your taxonomies can evolve over time. Okay, where are your taxonomies kept? Uh, on, on the left here, we've got you know, another way of thinking or other terms for taxonomies, other ways of thinking about taxonomies, uh, categories, groups, labels, tags, metadata, segments, context, lists. Um, again, these are uh, classifications, groups that let you gather similar things together. Um, we put lists and segments here because th that is a way of, uh, of organizing your information. Uh, and often, um, you know, those lists will tell you what your taxonomies are or could be. Um, so if you have an email list that is about, a, you know, it's from a particular program uh, within your organization and that program is on a topic, then you might say, ah, okay, we have a list on this topic. Um, this topic is our taxon is, is one of our taxonomies. So how do you uncover those taxonomies? Well, one, if you're lucky, um, uh, you have some sort of documentation uh, in your organization that says, here is a taxonomy. Here's our taxonomies. Um, again, often that is, you know, here's our website information architecture. Here are the topics that are, you know, are included on our website. Here's how to use those topics, how to expand those topics. Um, the uh, taxonomy documentation and governance for website is often the beachhead um, for where um, uh, you know, your taxonomies live. So if you're in comms, maybe you have that. If you're and you know, really any, if you're anywhere in the organization, you might have that document. That's a great place to start. If you don't have taxonomies sort of um, clearly defined as such outside of their systems, um, then these are places that you can go to start to explore the taxonomies that are in play. Um, again, the, the obvious one, the one that we'll start with because it's a little, it's one of the easiest ones to sort of do uh, live with people is taking a look at your website, um, your menus, your navigation, your information architecture. You can also look at the hashtags that you use on social media or that your audiences use. Another key thing about taxonomies, particularly when you are thinking about uh, developing taxonomies that interface with your audiences, is making sure you're speaking the same language. Um, uh, you know, if, if you're using one term because you, you know, your internal experts agree that that is the term, that's all well and good. But if all of your audiences are using a completely different term, then you have a disconnect there. Um, and that, that is a big part of what uh, topic taxonomies are often all about is figuring out what that language connection is uh, between your language internally and your audience's languages. Um, 
bottom up kind of ways that you can reveal in your organization is, uh, you know, talk to different um, members of your team and say, okay, if you're getting emails about a particular um, event, how do you organize them? Um, do you organize them by project? Do you organize them by contact? Do you organize them about priority? Um, again, it's going to depend kind of on All right, see that okay? Team, give me a thumbs up. I think we had a regional in internet issue, uh, so I was having some trouble as well, um, not too far from Adam. All right. Uh, so yeah, where we, where we left off here um, was this concept of, of you know, where do taxonomies live? Um, and the uh, as Adam was kind of getting into, um, your taxonomies just exist. If you use WordPress, you use a CMS, um, and, and you're entering data in there, uh, there's metadata on everything. Um, it may not be a well thought out taxonomy. It may not be agreed upon by everyone on the staff, uh, but a taxonomy does exist, lives in that system, lives on your website. It's visible by um, different audiences that come. And there's also in the back end things that people can't see um, that you maybe that maybe wind up being valuable that you could later. Uh, push out uh, to the world and communicate to them and let them use it when they're navigating your site. Um, but there's also just, you know, the way you e organize your emails and your email program, um, the hashtag you use on social media, the uh, that may tie back to departments, may tie, tie back to different campaigns, um, the contacts that you have, um, and, and the way you sort your contacts in, in a CRM or even, uh, you know, just in different spreadsheets or something like that, departmental contacts versus organizational contacts. Uh, project names, another example, marketing campaigns, titles or categories of internal reports. Um, so you, you probably, you use taxonomies every day uh, and it, it often winds up being this sort of unconscious thing um, that not everyone agrees on. Um, you know, uh, we've definitely seen organizations that will say, well, we have 10 different member types and then somebody will chime in and say, actually, we only have five. Um, and it, and it, and that kind of internalization um, is really bears kind of laying out and getting consensus in the organization and thinking through what is a taxonomy? Um, what, what, what is it officially? Let's have a, a shared agreed upon understanding of this taxonomy uh, for the entire organization. And, um, and then let's, let's codify that. Let's make sure our systems think about taxonomy in the same way that our uh, our agency, our organization, our staff think about taxonomy and taxonomies as well. Um, I think Adam is just getting back up to speed. Um, so if uh, feel free, Adam, if you're if you're on or when you're on, uh, jump in as you're able. Uh, if you need me to uh, keep moving the deck, uh, I can keep sharing my screen. Not a problem there. Uh, but I think this next section here is just uh, once you've done that, once you've agreed upon your taxonomy, you figured out where they live, or you've decided where they should live, uh, and you start teaching your systems your organizational context. So, you know, ideally, uh, your CMS, your uh, content management system, your CM, uh, your CRM, uh, your emails, everything should think about taxonomy, think about your content, think about your outreach in the same way that you that you do. And that is kind of where we want to to get next. Once it's once you're in agreement, you know, once you've got your systems on the same page as your staff, um, then you can start putting your taxonomy uh, to work. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> one of the things that we'll we'll look at is kind of building that taxonomy uh, of taking it from a stage of well, this is just the way we've always done things, or this is the way a system collects data to uh, let's let's make sure it represents the way we, we think about that data. Um, asking questions can pressure test categories for clarity of usage. Uh, and that's just a fancy way of saying, um, you know, use the taxonomy you've got now, uh, start reporting on it and see if it matches your expectation. Um, for some of our clients, I know we've just started capturing the categories on their website. 
um, as part of metadata in Google Analytics or another analytics platform. Uh, and then we can run a report and we can go back and say, okay, these, these are the, the pages that show up under this department or under sustainability or under uh, you know, a, a better energy usage, anything like that. And, and you can pretty get, quickly get kind of gut checks uh, from staff of saying, no, no, that's, that's not the right department. That's not where that should live. Or actually that's split between two departments. So we need some way for our taxonomy to understand that things can belong uh, to multiple departments in an organization. So yeah, one of, the, one of the best things to do is just start asking questions, just start reporting on the taxonomies you do have um, and let those, let, let those answers guide uh, the, next, the next round, the next level of taxonomy building that you need to do. And I see that Adam has returned. Uh, so Adam, when you're up to speed, just uh, go ahead and take over. Happy to uh, keep sharing the screen if you need me to as well. All right, let me let me share my screen because I'm gonna be jumping around a sure. little bit. Thanks for jumping in there, Rick. Absolutely. Sorry for the technical issues, everybody. One second. Just go into present for you one second. Okay. All right. Um, again, thinking about uh, building out your taxonomy, uh, you know, some of the aspects that we won't really go into a lot today. Um, but thinking about who owns and manages the taxonomy, you know, how complex or easy it is to change uh, everywhere that it should be used. You know, kind of a, a key thing about taxonomy is, is like with all things, governance and documentation. Where is your taxonomy documented? Where is it governed? Um, that's a great place to start. And that's where we're going to start in just a minute. Um, some other considerations as you are um, getting your taxonomy together, again, from an external and internal standpoint, thinking about, you know, for your audiences, what search terms are they using? What kinds of content they're looking for? How will they know if content is interested to them? And then what what connects those pieces of content, even if you know they're they're not explicit on your site? Um, think about reporting in terms of what types of uh, conversions matter, types of reports you want to have about your content, um, and then content operations. How, how do you group your content together in campaigns? You know, so um, you know, often you'll think of okay, we're going to uh, post a blog post or put up a report, um, what other places can that topical taxonomy um, uh, inform or uh, connect different campaigns? So do you have email about the topic that's sent to go out automatically to you? Do you have your experts on a topic engage on social media using the, the topic hashtags that you've identified? So really thinking through all of those um, sort of content operations. Okay. So what we're going to do now is start to identify, um, go through an exercise that you can identify your taxonomy. And let's see, I had to rejoin, so I don't see in chat um, if everyone got the link to, uh, to the template um, of the spreadsheet. And I think we had a volunteer that I saw. So let me open this up one second. All right, so we had uh, Emily from Rett Syndrome Research Trust volunteer. So in a second, I'm going to pull up um, that website and start to talk through you know, how we can look for taxonomies. Um, so when you want to do this with your with your own site, um, open up your website, explore some pages. Again, often it's good to start with a content page, like a report or a blog post or even an event. Um, and then you want to start to jot down ideas for, for terms or phrases that you might use to categorize the content. Again, you can think through the lens of what might a user be looking for or looking for more of. Um, you know, what departments, panels, or staff are related to the content? What important information is there behind the scenes uh, that might relate to it? 
And you can put those ideas down in the taxonomy inventory. Uh, so I'll talk, I'll pull that sheet up in a second and talk through it briefly. Um, but the idea is that everything to the left uh, of, of the bar is kind of what we'll be focusing on today, which is identifying your taxonomies and example terms. So going back to uh, our example from the blog post, the taxonomy was topics and the term was data. Um, but we also have change management and search engine optimization and website redesign as, as all, all other terms uh, in that topical taxonomy. So on the left, we'll really be focusing on identifying what taxonomies are in play. We've left some categories of taxonomies in there as examples. Um, not all are going to be relevant to, uh, to all organizations, uh, but these are common ones that come up and uh, you know, are, are good to sort of have a sense of what, what types of things are possible and what types of things we're talking about. So that's to the left. Uh, and then everywhere from the right is ways that you can dig deeper into that ta taxonomy uh, with yourself, with your media team, and with your colleagues across the organization. Um, so we have uh, likely uh, using this taxonomy today. Actually, I will just jump over to the worksheet and show you here. So moving from left to right, talking about the audiences that are using the taxonomy, um, primary and secondary. So uh, again, you don't have to be super rigid or precise with this at the start, but just thinking, who is this for? Uh, you know, who, who uses this taxonomy? Um, the purpose or relevance um, of the taxonomy um, for uh, external audiences and internal reporting or operations. Uh, and again, these are just checkboxes. So you can say, hey, the topic taxonomy, that's important both to our external audiences as well as to uh, in, internal to the organization. Uh, column G is a place where you can capture notes about the current state of the taxonomy, maybe how it's documented, um, you know, how you want to evolve, uh, how you want to evolve it or use it. Um, and then the last three columns really get into the governance and documentation. Uh, who owns the taxonomy? Where will its use be documented? And how easy or complex is it to change? Um, the easier complex is it to change uh, can get, you know, another sort of uh, illustration of that is um, in, uh, in websites that have topical structures, maybe you have five big topics and those are almost always going to be the same and have you know, you'd have to go through a big process to change those five big topics um, but subtopics can be changed a little bit more frequently so that is the spreadsheet um, i think i see a request to share it all right so i just pet, put that in the chat and okay Okay, so what we will do, and I realize we're running a little close on time. Again, apologies for the technical difficulties. So we are going to take a look at the Rett Syndrome Research Trust. Um, and I'm just gonna go through and I see what some of the taxonomies I see are. Um, so I, again, a, a great first place to start is just looking at the top navigation um, to get a sense of what the organization is about uh, and how the, the content is categorized. So I can see just looking in um, this immediate, uh, this first item, RET families, um, I see recently diagnosed. So I'm going to go over to the taxonomy sheet and I'm just going to create a category for um, so for other so these are just groupings of taxonomies these aren't the taxonomies themselves so i'm going to put diagnosis status recent so it looks like uh, uh, the Rett Syndrome Research Trust has uh, content that is specifically for, for people who are recently diagnosed. Um, what else do I see here? I see families. Um, 
I'm going to put that under diagnosis status. Maybe that's part of that same grouping. Maybe that's different. What else do I see here? I see uh, genetics primer. So I'm going to say we have we seem to have a content type. category in play here. And so we'll call that content types or resources, maybe resources, primers. And what I'm going to do for both of those is I'm going to check that those are for audiences. Um, and I assume probably for some degree of internal reporting or operations. What else do we have? Okay, I see RETs, RET clinics and clinical trials. So I'm going to put a couple more in here. Clinics, trials. So this would be, you know, if you if there are multiple clinics, you can say clinics, clinic A, clinic B. All right. So let's say that those are potentially for external audiences to, to find clinics, to find trials, um, also uh, for inter internal reporting and ops. Um, I don't see this in the navigation, but I'm gonna put it in as a question mark to say um, regions. So we'll say state or city region, something like that, um, so that you can combine those two taxonomies. So we'll say, North Carolina. This is where I live, North Carolina. Um, so that you can combine uh, some of these terms and tax taxonomies to say, okay, I want to find clinics in North Carolina or trials in North Carolina or within some you know degree or vicinity um, to that particular region. What else? I see. Um, fact cards. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in under content types. Again, maybe, you know, on further exploration, that that is a taxonomy of its own. Maybe there are lots of different types of fact cards. And I think we'll do we'll do one other section here. Um, so research. Okay, so I'm going to create I'm going to create a category called research and we're going to call it uh, so cures initiatives studies. Drop a couple more in there. and studies. Okay. And that is just from a few minutes of you know, sort of looking at the site. Um, you know, we could also do ones for, uh, you know, take action. So there is on this sheet, there's like a, there's an advocacy section. Um, so if there are, you know, particular types of fundraisers, maybe particular types of advocates, um, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and put campaigns under there. And you can start to see how that uh, can kind of expand out for your uh, for your organization. Um, so I'm going to stop there just so we have a, a few minutes if there are any other questions and um, uh, Emily, we can we can uh, um,
circle back and uh, talk more uh, about your your website as well. Um, where you go from this is you know getting together with your team and saying, okay, are there other taxonomies that are in play? You know, and again, go into the right on any of these terms. You know, what do we use this for? Who's the audience for this? Um, how can we you know what could we do more with this particular taxonomy? Are there ways that maybe we have it on the website and maybe we'd like to start using it in email? Um, so the, the considerations here are really what start to point the directions for, uh, you know, what you can do with the taxonomy, how you can evolve it, um, you know, really thinking through the, uh, the, the areas around ownership um, and documentation. So uh, if it's not documented, saying, hey, this spreadsheet could be the start of the documentation for our taxonomy uh, and evolving from there. So I'm sorry we didn't have more time to, to go into that. Uh, example, but hopefully, um, hopefully that's clear, and you can use the spreadsheet uh, to start to really document uh, and expand your own taxonomy. Um, let me jump back here, and so some considerations moving forward as you're using this. Um, again, thinking through how those taxonomies are in use today. Again, if you see them on the website, it's used on the website in some way, even if it's not fully codified. Um, what makes those taxonomies relevant to your internal stakeholders and external audiences? You know, are there taxonomies missing? Um, a key thing about taxonomies, they should evolve over time, and you really want to involve others in your org in that continual evolution so that everyone is speaking the same page and your the information in your various systems can speak to each other. Uh, so that, for example, um, you know, if people are interested in a particular trial in a particular area, then the people who are delivering those services can know about it using the same structure uh, as your website uses or your email list uses. Um, so you know, this is this is a good tool. This is a starting point. It's a big topic. If any of you have been through uh, information architecture rebuild or website rebuild, uh, you know how big and expansive and, and uh, contentious uh, taxonomies can be. Um, but hopefully this sh showed you a little bit of the power of taxonomies, uh, the importance for collaboration and building taxonomies, and a, uh, a good place to start um, or continue your taxonomy documentation. So with that, uh, I will pause and we will either end or we might have time for a question. And I will just say as well that if you would like to continue the conversation and talk about taxonomy, I'm always happy to talk about taxonomy. It's something I'm really passionate about. Uh, so you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find us on LinkedIn as well. Um, if you want to attend more of these and be involved in our community of uh, people who care about improving engagement with mission-driven organizations, uh, you can visit our community page. If you'd like to work with us, come, uh, come to the project page, our project, or just reach out uh, and, and we can keep talking. Um, we have a link to a survey. Uh, that you can take to let us know how we're doing, uh, you know, what worked, what didn't. Um, obviously, the, the brief internet cutout was, was uh, less than optimal. Um, but thank you so much for your time uh, and attention to this. And uh, have a wonderful uh, holiday season. Stay safe, stay warm. <laughs>